what's up y'all i'm gonna run this story for y'all real quick right down the side of this panel right here i would like to read it to you but i just don't have time to read it i read it already and this guy named tony up in seattle a few weeks ago he got sick of uber eats doordash all these apps playing with their money now we know they get minimum wage and everything like that they got all the laws involved all the legalities involved this a bunch of you know government stuff involved that's why when we did the protest we didn't want nothing involved i do not want the government involved seattle is a very bad case of how things should turn out this guy tony right here he started his own delivery company tony deliveries you know why because uber eats used to have them sit around for six hours with no deliveries Everything from DoorDash and all these because of government fees, Seattle was throwing their fees on top of the Uber fees and the DoorDash fees. The city is now throwing their fees in because the city is involved now. This is why we don't want people legally involved in what we're doing as far as legislation goes. We want something legally goes to something being put in like in play for us to, you know, get paid for like vacation time. Maybe maybe we get, you know, some sick time if we have to if we get hurt on a job, we get some workers comp. That's what we're aiming for when it comes time to pay. These companies are not paying because they're saying, well, because we got to do minimum wage and we got to bump everything up to minimum wage, we got to raise our fares up. We got to raise our fees up. This is not what we're talking about. That's why this article is very important. And I want to run it. Like I said, I'll blow it up a little bit so you guys can kind of read it. But understand what we're talking about. Every time we say we want to protest, we want more money. We want to go get ours. And if you're not going to get it, we need to go do it ourselves. This guy went out and did it himself. Like I said, we did 300. We talk about that all the time. If they're not going to pay us in ride share, we'll go get the cash rides ourselves. And that's what these apps are scared of. They're scared of people like Tony. They're scared of people like us who are willing to step up and say, you know what? If you ain't going to pay me, I'll go do it myself. This is my time, my vehicle. He does it on a bike. My vehicle, my car, my insurance, my body for workers' comp if I get hurt and you're not willing to pay me. You're taking all of these fees, and by the time I walk away, I'm getting $5, and you guys are getting $9 out of the order. It's like, it's an extra $14 this person is paying. You guys are taking nine, I'm getting five. It's not fair. And I'm glad a lot of people, even delivery now, are starting to step up and realize it's not fair. It's not just ride share. Ride share is a whole nother world other than delivery. I always thought delivery should be doing their own catering. They should be doing their own, you know, getting customers and saying hey you know what you got kids yeah i'm always at work my kids never get this is what we'll do we'll set it up to where you can just cash at me money and i'll go pick up the mcdonald's for your kids and deliver it for dinner because i know you're at work all the time or i'll go pick up the chinese food and deliver it for your kids hey jeff hey this is sarah you know i'm be working late if i cash at you 30 dollars real quick and you go pick up the same order i got last week sure cash at me the 30 dollars the order might come out to be 19 dollars that means she gave me $11 and I only went like maybe three, four miles, made the 11 bucks real quick. And I knew what her order was. She's like, hey, this is your my order right here. She can text it on the screen. This is what I usually order for my kids while I'm at work. There's ways for people to go out there and get their own money. Delivery drivers got to be more creative. The apps, the apps already know. We bring people food to lunch. Hey, man, I'm going to bring you lunch tomorrow. All right, bet. Hey, man, I'm going to bring you some, some uh, flowers over to the, okay, cool, no problem. We can legally do that. There's no app that tells us we can't bring somebody lunch. We can't go drop off dinner for somebody. There's no law for that. If you're doing it, you've been doing it for generations already. If your wife is at work and you go take your wife dinner at work, all oh, you need commercial insurance for that. You can't be bringing your wife food without commercial insurance. What kind of shit is that? You need commercial insurance to be dropping off hot dogs and hamburgers. You can't just do that just because there's a law against that. Trust me, that's what these apps want you to think. And I'm glad this guy created Tony Deliveries because it shows that you all out there, you got to get you some business cards. Find out who's recurring customers. Find out who's always ordering food for their kids. Find out who don't have a car and always orders food to their house and tell them, hey, let's form a relationship. You're paying way too much for this shit because you got to pay me. You got to tip me. You got to pay the apps. I mean, you're probably paying an extra $19 extra on top of everything. When you can just give me 10 bucks extra, save yourself $10. I'll go get the food for you. Cash at me the food, cash at me the money. I'll go down there and pick up the food, ring the doorbell, drop it off, do whatever. I'm in this area all the time anyways. Might say, hey, okay, every day we like to eat dinner around eight or nine. Is there any way you could just drop off the wing stop at eight or nine every night? Sure. Just cash at me the money like around seven, seven thirty, so I can get into the area. When I get into the area, I'll go pick up yours and drop it off. Man, it works. 
We can do transactions all day long without these apps. And these apps know that shit. That's why we coming for them. They're scared of what we can do. They're scared of the ingenuity of what a strong mind will do. We're not going to sit around pinching pennies getting 85 cents an order. A dollar 85 an order. I go get a person in my car and be like, dude, do you order all the time? Yeah, man, I don't got no car, man. I'm always up here playing video games and shit. I love my Chinese food. I just can't go get it, man. I just tell you what, here's my card. This is the type of deal we're going to set up. Shoot me a text, this and that. You know, I'll shoot you my cash out, my Venmo. If that's what you want, I'm already in that area. I'll go swing by and pick it up. Just text me about an hour in advance. Let me know that you're going to be ordering tonight and you're going to be sending me a cash app, for, you know, for 15 bucks to go get your food. Because this food might only cost six, seven dollars. So you're going to get $8, but he's paying the app like $23, $24 just so they can pay you. They can take all the fees and everything else out of it. So he's paying $23 for six, $7 order. People going to go broke doing that. That's why we step into the fray. We step in and say, hey, we can help you guys save money. This is how we going to do it. The guy, Tony, figured it out. He's running his own business. He won't give his financials the fortune as you can read in the app. He won't, I mean, read in the, uh, the article. He won't tell what his financials are, but trust me. If he stopped doing the apps and now he's doing his own thing and Fortune Magazine is reporting it, Fortune.com is reporting, their delivery drivers doing their own thing now, trust me, they see us coming. We the 300, they see us coming. Now here's another article with them, but this one's a little bit better. This is from The Eater Seattle. Now with this one, he's talking about how he printed up the QR codes, how he you know, went to the Bare Bones website. I'm going to kind of read a little bit for you. Okay, two weeks ago, Tony Ills found a hole in the marketplace. He was working as an Uber Eats delivery person when the ordinance passed last year by Seattle City Council came into effect in mid-January. The new rule requirement, the new rule required app companies to pay workers like Ills a minimum wage based on the miles they travel and the minutes they spend on the job. The app said that this amounts to around $26 an hour, and both Uber Eats and DoorDash responded by adding $5 fees to every order, even when the customer is outside Seattle's uh, city limits. While, the, while calling for the law to be repealed. According to a recent DoorDash blog, the ordinance has resulted in an unprecedented drop in order volume, a drop that Ills felt personally. He told GeekWire that demand is dead. I didn't get any, I didn't get an order for like six hours and I was done. And that's when he decided to do his own thing. That's probably all I'm going to read to you right there because there's a lot more to it. I mean, this guy, he's pretty much, you know, he's the symbol of resistance against both the rise in restaurant food and the encompassing dehumanizing effects of Silicon Va Valley enabling the gig economy. So I want you guys to see these, all of these articles that are out there about this delivery guy really taking matters in his own hand, doing his own thing. He's not holding back. He's not waiting. And I think a lot of us ride share drivers, we're already at that point. If these gig companies don't realize how valuable we are, how much money we're making them, they're going to suffer in the end. And I like the way where he kind of talks. Somebody was like, you know what? Um, if you haven't met Ills, he's got cab driver's gift of seam of seamless stream of consciousness conversation. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of like how I am. A seamless consciousness conversation. That's kind of how it is. And it, he said it's something like, you know, what are we saying? Something about the bystander effect. The phenomenon where people don't intervene to help others because they think someone else will. See, I'm one of those people that don't think other people are going to help. So I step up to the plate. That's why I came up with We Did 300 like a couple of years ago. Because I'm like, if we don't start this small army, if we don't start building each other up, they're going to keep taking people over. Like I said, even my man Real Talk with Roy said the same shit. There's people who just sit around watching. They ain't never going to do nothing. They just sit around seeing people going down in flames. Nobody else steps up to help. I guess that's why I'm the way I am. And it's funny because this guy, Tony. He's got the same thing like I got. Like people say, Jeff, man, you got gift of the gab, man. You could just talk and have a conversation all day. That's why I hate to read. I do not like to read because I like to talk. I can read. It ain't like I'm illiterate, but it's just talking seems so much more easier for me than reading somebody else's words because they wrote it with a certain passion. They wrote it at a certain level, and I'll allow it to be like that. You can read it however you want to read it. That's why I let people read what they want. But I like to go through and read a few things like here and there, you know, uh, where he was saying something else like, you know, he does something that he asks his customers that the app doesn't. He requires that they meet him in person to get the food and he'll talk to him or take a selfie for his Instagram, stuff like that. He makes people feel like they're a part of the transaction. It's not just like how the apps are. Drop the food off. People call, hey, I ain't getting massage and muffin. They eating the motherfucker the whole time. It's like lying. 
With this guy, he's more like, I want to be one-on-one. Kind of like how we are with our riders. We want to be one-on-one. We want to talk. We want to chat. Hey, how your kids doing? How things doing? My man Stanley Jenkins in Memphis, he goes out and he gets people like actual gifts. He bought one of his clients something. Like she had an issue. He went out and bought something like a big old box. He sent me a picture. It was a big ass box. I'm like, dude, you cool as a motherfucker. I wish you was my driver, damn it. <laughs> but that's how it is. Sometimes you got to you gotta bring humanity to the situation. We already dehumanized by other people. We're dehumanized by people with W-2s. We dehumanized by the apps and their staff. We've got to know our own words. We've got to rise up. We've got to say, you know what? If you guys don't want to pay us, cool. Don't don't trick me. I start going out and getting my own money. Because that's when you're going to start freaking out when you see me out getting my own money. This guy Tony's figured it out, man, in delivery. And like I said, I didn't think delivery was one of those ways that you could do it. Clearly, he's done it. So I appreciate people like him putting this story out there. I want to drop this story for you guys. I know it's kind of like a weird video because I had the Forbes one at first, then I had this one after that. But you guys got to go to these websites. You guys got to find ways to make that money. There's people out there doing things. You guys got to go out there and get this money. Don't sit around waiting on handouts. Don't wait on these apps to pay you. They're going to drag this shit out for as long as they can to not pay you. You got to rise up, go out, get that money, figure it out.